Hey guys, my name is KJ OS and hate it or love it, but the iPhone 13 is still one of the best selling phones in the world right now and for good reason. It is 6.1 inches with the square design so it's pretty comfortable to hold in your hand without a case. It has the A15 Bionic chip that is arguably faster than the competition, the best video camera and I think it sits within a great price range of $799 USD. But with the new iPhone 14 coming out sometime in September, the real question is, should you buy a close to one year old iPhone 13 or should you wait for the iPhone 14? The smaller phone factor already makes it a great phone to use on a daily basis. Now, apart from it being 6.1 inches, it has already a square design that makes it easier to grip the phone. Now, helping with its protection, the iPhone 13 has an aluminum frame with Gorilla Glass on the back, making it easier or in this case, harder for the back of your phone to crack or get scratched. And all this brings the phone to a light weight of 174 grams. Now, I absolutely love that because I can use this phone for long hours and not have any form of hand fatigue. At the top left of the phone, we have the square camera bomb that we have come to know and love. Now, it is a dual camera setup that is a standard wide angle lens and an ultra wide lens, but more on that later. On the right side is the power button only, and on the left side has the volume button and the silent mode toggle, and of course, a SIM card tray. Personally, I wished all buttons were on one side of the phone for, you know, uniformity's sake. Now at the bottom, we have speakers that are honestly great. Listening to music and taking calls were pretty good. And finally, we have the infamous or famous lightning cable that probably is never gonna go away, but we can only hope with the upcoming iPhone 14 or the iPhone 14 Pro, Apple gives us a USB-C to USB-C cable. With an OLED display and a max brightness of 1200 nits, the display of the iPhone 13 is pretty good and is probably second behind when it comes to Samsung in this department. Now a big difference between this and a lot of newer flagships like the S22 or the Pixel 6 is the lack of a refresh rate. Now the iPhone only runs on 60Hz and I honestly can't tell the difference, or at least a huge amount. Now don't get me wrong, ProMotion is dope but it's not exactly a deal breaker in this regard because the iPhone 13 almost runs on 60Hz most of the time that I can't even tell the difference unless I'm really looking for it. Now I do miss having an always on display though, just to glance at my phone when I'm busy. Hopefully we see that with the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro. Regardless, Apple delivers here. And before I forget, it also has that notch, but that's gonna go away with the upcoming iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now for the retail price, the display is pretty good. Media consumption is also very satisfying if you can get past the notch, and with the 1200 max brightness, you can see fine during the day. But the continuous use of a bright display impacts your battery life significantly, and the iPhone 13 handles battery and optimization really well. Now, when this was released, Apple promised about 1.5 hours of better battery than the iPhone 12, and I can say with the iPhone 13, they delivered that promise because the battery on the iPhone 12 was pretty bad. Now, on the 13, the battery capacity is about 3,240 and delivers about seven hours of screen on time averagely with very good standby time. I start my day pretty early and end my day about 11 p.m. with 20% of battery left. And the standby time has also improved. When fully charged to 100%, it takes a while before it starts reducing. I use my phone a lot to answer calls, answer emails and whatnot, and I can comfortably go out with about 60% of battery and I know I will go out through the night without any issues. And if you do run out of battery, it takes about an hour to get to a full charge, so that's pretty nice. To unlock your phone, there are two methods, that is Face ID and your PIN. With Face ID, it's pretty quick and responsive. It's not exactly the most secure as a fingerprint reader, but it does get the job done. Now, if that doesn't suit you or work for you, then you can use a four to six digit pin, and that also works, and it's honestly more secure than anything else. My wish list though, is for Apple to give us a Touch ID or an in-display fingerprint scanner. Only time will tell. One of the best things about the iPhone 13 is its software. Currently, I am on iOS 15.5, and it has worked out some of the kinks regarding apps occasionally crashing and whatnot. But apart from that, iOS is still well ingrained and well optimized on the iPhone 13. Now a downside though is the lack of customizations, but Apple has shown it's going to change all of that with iOS 16. Now I don't think it will be as good as anything like the Pixel 6 and Material U, but it is a step in the right direction. The Apple ecosystem is still its strongest selling point. The communication between Apple devices helps my workflow tremendously, from airdropping documents, scanning, and many more. There is competition though with Samsung and Google, but for now, nobody comes 
even remotely close to the Apple ecosystem. And finally, we have those cameras. The iPhone 13 has two cameras which are a 12 megapixel wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, while in front it has a single 12 megapixel selfie camera. Personally, when it comes to the cameras, the iPhone comes in second to the Pixel when just taking pictures. And that doesn't mean the iPhone camera is bad or anything. It's just really amazing the quality of pictures that you can take with this. Now, I took a couple of pictures during my trip to Mexico and I must say they came out really well. The color accuracy is top notch, the vibrance and saturation is pretty well balanced and so is the dynamic range. Apart from the occasional miscoloring of my skin, majority of the pictures came out very well. The ultra wide is not great, if you're not in direct sunlight or have any good light source, the pictures that you take don't come out really well. It was almost really bad but then again not a lot of people use an ultra wide lens so most people won't really care. Where Apple shines the most with the iPhone 13 is with its video. It shoots at 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second. The iPhone 13 series still has the best video camera on any smartphone to date. It is very consistent and sometimes you can't even tell the difference if you're using an iPhone to shoot a YouTube video. It really is just that good. Now, if you do want to start creating content, then the iPhone 13 is a great start. Now, the iPhone 13 is honestly a great phone to have in 2022. It has that great camera, it has a great battery life, and of course, iOS that is well optimized, especially when paired with other Apple devices. And the price is not so steep, coming in at $799 USD from that Apple store. So, now the question is should you wait for the iPhone 14 or buy the iPhone 13? Honestly, if we know Apple, which we do, the difference between the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 14 wouldn't be so much. Now the difference will be on the iPhone 14 Pro instead that does not even have that notch anymore amongst other things. So you should wait to get a better price out of the iPhone 13 once the new lineups of iPhones come out sometime in September. But I guess new isn't always better. Thank you guys for watching and if you haven't you should definitely subscribe to the channel and help me get to 5,000 subscribers and hit that like button if you like this video. My name is KJOS and I will catch you guys in the next one where I talk all things tech.